Hey y'all, it's Renegade, and I hope you're ready to spill some more reality as we get into the latest episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9. Let's get things right away and introduce our legendary, legend-beautiful benefactresses who will be kicking with us tonight through all the stars, styles, and spectacles of Episode 6, the National Drag Convention Roast. Sadly tonight, Cody will not be joining us, but we have our other regular co-casters joining us tonight, so let's welcome back once again... The fact that he is just so gay, he could tell the flavor of a popsicle by sitting on it. I need to know his secrets now. It's Crocker Jack. Jack, how are you doing tonight? I'm literally the biggest prude of all of us. How dare you? But I'm doing amazing. Thank you. And it tastes like orange, doesn't it? Oh. This Girl, I don't know that shit. <laughs> and y'all, welcome back after his brief hiatus. And he is so white. If he was a spice, he would be flower. It's Whiskers. Whiskers, how are you doing tonight? I bet you all thought you'd seen the last of me, but I'm back. I'm feeling great. Thank you. What was that read? I didn't even have time to process that read. Wow. Oh, we'll just go, go ahead and bypass that tonight. So, um, Whiskers, okay. um, you've been going for, for the last two weeks there. Um, yes. <laughs> so, been, uh, anything that's been going on in the last couple episodes here that we, uh, haven't been able to talk about that maybe piqued your interest that you would like to uh, discuss tonight before we get into everything moving forward here? I've I've enjoyed the overall vibe of the last two episodes. We had the the makeover challenge, right? And then um, the one before that was the the skits, like the the selling the properties. So I I think I enjoyed the last episode more than the makeover, but I don't even the makeover was cute and I liked how they kind of were in teams for the makeover. Um, so it was just they're kind of switching things up a little bit this season. So I like that. Um, and just the the overall like storytelling of the season, I'm I'm kind of enjoying more so the last few episodes. Maybe just that's tied to the the drama that's kind of been starting to bubble up. Um, that was definitely a concern that we were thinking about going into the season. Like, OK, there's no eliminations. Like, what are the stakes? Is there even going to be drama? But I think we're getting it. So I'm I'm excited. I'm licking my fingers. I'm very excited too. I think we're starting to, uh, it feels like maybe we're getting like a long con here of this very dramatic, long thought out story line that we're maybe getting this season versus, you know, in other situations where it's like fights, you get just kind of quick bursts of things coming at you very quickly. Um, I think maybe they're going for, you know, the Long Kong, the story. They're trying to get the Emmy this year. So um, who knows? Um, hopefully things are kind of moving in a, a very dramatic direction. I think where we ended things tonight um i this very long um again this story long that we're beginning between angeria and roxy is continuing to show itself and basically be I, i'd say at the forefront of everything that's happening in the competition now and um we can kind of get into um all of that dramatics in uh, just a few moments but one thing I did want to bring up because I've been enjoying kind of starting out these podcasts lately with a little bit of tea from uh, maybe the episode before. Um, but one thing I wanted to bring up in this episode about last episode is the lip sync. Because for me personally, I've been having, uh, needless to say, some issues with these lip syncs. <laughs> whether it's the song choice, um, whether it's just the fact that it doesn't feel like they have much on the line here. Oh, it's been a little just, it's been a, a very sad way that I feel like to end the episodes when you have like so much momentum going and then you end it on like, like what the fuck is going on here? Um, last week, especially when they had Super Freaky Girl with Nicki Minaj, um, I was very much so sitting there the whole time like, these girls don't know the words, do they? And it was confirmed. Um, I, I forget who was at Roscoe's here, but they said that they did not know the words. Um, actually, um, what happened was they had one version of the song on their lip sync, or on their uh, iPad that they get to practice on, and then they actually played the explicit version for them out on the stage, which is, I guess is different. It also has them throwing out like the N word and stuff, so um, it might probably be a bit a good thing here that uh, like they didn't know the words here because uh, having Plastique and Roxy do that there probably wouldn't have been the best two people, <laughs> to, you know, um, have to uh, mime those kind of words out there, so. Um, but also, apparently, none of the other girls do the words to the song here, too. So um, it wouldn't have just been them. It would have been anybody who stepped on that stage probably would have failed miserably. So um, I'm just curious what y'all thoughts are on these lip syncs in the season, because for me, they've been very lackluster. Um, Whiskers, I'll let you start here. 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's a travesty to all the the barbs out there that they nobody knew the words to the last lip sync. Like, come on, that's kind of an iconic song. I feel like at least one of them should have known. Um, but yeah, they've obviously they've been very very lackluster this season, which is unfortunate. Like all stars, you get the stakes are kind of lower in a lot of cases, and like it's not lip syncing for your life. Um, so you, you don't get the same intensity in the lip syncs that you do in the normal seasons, which I, I always find myself missing in All-Stars. So that's definitely coming through, maybe even more so in the season, um, with just the overall theme, like everybody's staying, like it's all for charity, like everybody's just winning and having fun. Um, but I, I don't know. I think there's chance for improvement. Um, we'll get into this episode's lip sync later, but I thought it was an improvement of amongst the rest of them but yeah still overall pretty lackluster i I think maybe what the girls are improving in are different areas maybe their talents maybe their you know their their confidence in certain things but yeah i I don't know if these lip syncs are are, (laughs) you know benefiting from this format um jack do you have any uh thoughts on the matter here so i'm a barb um the lip sync was very um, offensive in a way, but I can't fully blame the girls. I have, do think that there is some accountability that needs to be taken by the people who were like, you know, doing the editing of this song because I was I was really confused. I don't know if it's just the edit of the show or what was going on, but that last lip sync was just messy, and I I still don't understand like what we were looking at per se. Um, um, like the, I was like, is this where they cut the music? Is this just because it's like the lip sync and the girls don't necessarily know the lyrics or what's going on? Like, I, and I know that there was some controversy around like some people, especially didn't want to like have to do the cutting and I get it. Um, it was just, there, there was a lot going on in here that I could not wrap my mind around. Um, I do think that there is like less pressure on this season since there's no one going home and maybe that affects their like desire to necessarily win as well but i mean well we'll see but hopefully hopefully it'll get better throughout the season like maybe maybe girls are just a little afraid of like having to be the one to make that like decision that kind of starts everything and mm-hmm. starts that fire so you could think though that like this, you know they they joined this season specifically because they knew the format was there wasn't going to be any eliminations as opposed to being you know them having to cut each other like legitimately cut each other from the competition. So I it just it, it feels like they're even being more dramatic than the people were that had to cut. <laughs> you know, like never saw someone walk out on the main stage with like both lipsticks. Be like, I still don't know which one to choose. I can't decide. Like that would have been drama. Like they walk out with both lipsticks and like I still can't choose. Like just pull a rock. Like, but this this here, they're literally like, all you're doing is preventing them from getting a badge for one week out of a twelve week competition. Like it just, it it feels like we're going over the top here for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for for I don't know. Then again, we play social strategy games all the time. They have to play with their coworkers, so I'm like, I don't know if I would play with my coworkers. You know, like most of some of my coworkers, I don't even want to talk to. You. So I'm like, I I don't I also I get why you wouldn't want to you know do something that detrimental to you. So you know, it kind of goes both ways. But I, I'm. Hopefully, just hoping that whatever drama we're getting isn't necessarily just manufactured uh, for the sake of TV and that it's actually, you know, I would say legitimate. Uh, because I, I think, especially this episode, we start um, with uh, a little bit of controversy with uh, Roxy's dramatic scissoring from last week, which still great moment. Um, I did rewatch it back, Jack, just so you know. And I did see that she did actually legitimately put her hand up at the start. She She did try to hide it. Or block her face or whatever. So, so I agree with you. I see you there. Um, but Gottmik, Gottmik is not having it. She is saying Roxy is the saddest front runner, and she is not buying it. And she thinks that uh, Roxy actually kind of had it maybe planned out to some degree to land on Nigeria. And the only reason she changed her mind from Nigeria is because all the girls reacted crazy to it. Now, Roxy is saying she's telling the truth. Angie isn't sure what to believe. Uh, Whiskers, you weren't here last week, so you didn't get to join in on our initial conversation here. 
What are your thoughts here on Miss Roxy? Is she being genuine? Absolutely not. I think that's some bullshit. That, oh. <laughs> that she like did the hand blocking thing, but then proceeded to like be turned around backwards. And like the queens were saying stuff. So like she knew pretty much where everybody was. Like it's pretty hard. I don't know. I wasn't there in the moment, so I can't say for sure. But as a viewer and from what I was presented, I think it was it was Roxy trying to stir up some of the drama, which I do appreciate. But she she definitely knew that she was standing in front of Angeria, in my opinion. I don't see how how it could have gone any different way, but that's that's my spin on it. It all feels just too perfect, right? Too perfect yeah, to, exactly. to, to be coincidence. Jack? <laughs> it was great, though. Um, come come to Roxy's gonna... defense here, girl. I mean, it's not so much that. It's like, here's the thing. I'm not going to say that she did it on purpose, because I didn't get that feeling, because I, I just feel like, you know, her tears were real. I think her feelings are real. I think Roxy was for sure telling us that, like, she's going to tell us the tea, because I feel like... It's just you you know it, you feel it's real because it's like happening. It look maybe it looks fake, but like you gotta remember this is like happened so many months ago or whatever, and she's still holding on to this story, right? And maybe like she'll come up and be like, Oh, well actually and if that happens, great, I was proven wrong or whatever. But if the girl says it happened, I'm a believer. Like most of the times I believe people unless it's like I unless you can like tell the girl was like we got hard evidence, but we don't got nothing. But I do have to say something about Got Mick in that moment. I think Got Mick is very smart for that. I think Got Mick needs to be looked at under like that microscope because this is a very smart strategy from her. Like, because don't forget that Got Mick was the one who up and cut Angeria off, right? And was like, I guess I'm doing Roxy's like dirty work kind of thing. So I feel like this is a great time for her to, like, point out and, like, take Angeria's side. And if anything, I think that's the real strategy we have to look at here is, like, she's taken Angeria's side so that way she doesn't have to worry about, like, Angeria wanting to cut her back because she knows she's also still in the top. She's not the top front runner, but, you know, if Angeria wants to get... If Angeria really wants to get, uh, like, back on everyone who cut her, you know, there's Banji and then there's, uh... There's and uh, I'm sorry. There's Gottmik, so that's a great way to get out of it. And she's trying to avoid that Kill Bill knife for as long as possible, putting herself at the end of that list. Apologizing. Okay. I mean, I, I yeah, I I, I kind of see it. I kind of see it both ways. Um, I I also kind of. I, I do think Roxy probably played it up for the cameras. Um, but same time, though, too, I, I enjoy and appreciate the fact that she did it. So if she wants to continue and deny that she did it as long as she wants to, I'm perfectly fine because it, it just makes the moment that much more hilarious for me. So um, glad that we got... I, I, I mean, I'm honestly just... Uh, small moments like this are, are making me very happy about this season. <laughs> honestly. Um, so... Uh, let's go ahead. We'll, we'll fast forward to the, the mini challenge here because I thought that was kind of interesting to me in that uh, not necessarily the challenge itself was interesting, but more so the stakes for the challenge. Um, because for this uh, episode, they're kind of going, uh, I'd say, full out maybe uh, election mode. I'd say this is probably an, an inspired election episode um, because we start the episode out with a straw poll, which I, I still don't know what the fuck that is. Um, it, but they basically play majority rules here, um, where they come, uh, they give out uh, different election-related superlatives, and the girls vote on who they think is most likely to do something. Like, for example, I'm sure if all of us at the podcast were going to be like, who is most likely to skew a vote in favor of Vanjie, even when she has a terrible outfit, we would all vote for Cody. Um, Cody's not here to defend himself, so we're not going to bring that up here. Um, but I'm like, do it. <laughs> what we find out here, y'all, what I think this is the real tea, is... So they're basically playing majority rules for not only $2,500 for the charity, which is cool, they do that for most of the mini challenges, but they are also giving away a badge here, which I'm like, is this like Survivor? Are they going to just start doing like random like challenges and they're going to start getting like points for it? Like, <laughs> uh, Jack, what were your thoughts here when you found out that a, a badge was up stakes for the mini challenge? Uh, I thought this was smart. I was like, you know what? It, 
in past seasons when we've seen this format, like for All Star Seven, what we've seen is like only the girls giving out badges. And I thought I always think giving out a badge is kind of stupid. Like I, I kind of hate that. But like, you know, this is a bit more fun because now it's like, do you know the people in this competition you're against? Like it's it's a skill in itself almost in a in a social strategy kind of way. So I, I was totally down for this kind of move. Whiskers, what were your thoughts here? Do you approve of the this Mario Party strategy shenanigans happening here? Yes, the Mario Party. I I approve of it. I was a little surprised that they were just giving away a badge like that. But I mean, it makes sense if it's going to be for any of the challenges. This one, like Jack said, it is social strategy. Like you have to have knowledge of your fellow competitors. And I mean, the season, like the All Stars format, is all about strategy. Um, and like with the blocking and like, so it's it's kind of making Drag Race more of a social game a little bit, which I I am always down for. So I. I'm I'm fine with it. I give it a pass. It's like a way for them to make the world's hardest reality TV show even harder. And like, imagine playing Survivor, but while you're on Survivor Island, you also have to do drag. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like the worst. Surf island realness. <laughs> That'd be fun. You're cooking would... up raw sucks. You're going to <laughs> I'd be Jelinski every single season. Um, Lord. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I disliked the idea. I was just, I think it, it opens up this now, okay, what the hell else are they going to give away a star for here um, for me? So, I, I mean, I guess last time they did this, they gave away the badges. They gave away, what, like eight badges because they won the talent show. So, you know, I guess them throwing in a, a one badge here or there for a mini challenge, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. And I think it just makes things even more competitive. And, um, you know, it's another way for Chanel to not get a badge here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor girl. Uh, so, um, unfortunately here, uh, well, let's go over some of the superlatives that we got here, um, which in this point, at least the ones that were shown on the show, we got uh, Nina being voted as most likely to run for president, which was meh. Um, Georges getting most likely to never have voted in a presidential election, which probably true. Um, yeah. Roxy, I, I think, comes away with the most titles here, um, as the most likely to win America's Heart with her juicy ass, most likely to deny the outcome of All Stars 9, and the Secretary of Shade. And I thought those first two were kind of funny that she gets most likely to, like, be fan favorite, basically, but also most likely to deny the winner. So are they saying that Roxy probably isn't gonna win? Mm -hmm. Well... I think the weirdest one, though, out of all of them, which I didn't, I didn't see this coming here either. And this is another kind of plot toward twist that I feel like came out of nowhere. Um, was everybody? Well, I would say everybody. A, a vast majority of the group named Angeria is being the most delusional. Um, they say basically later on in the episode. But we'll, we'll talk about it now. Um, Actually, no one actually speaks up to the topic other than George's. George's owns up saying it. Um, it says Angie has like a confidence about her that she's always going to win a challenge. Um, but even if she's going to win, like they're like, they basically called her out for changing and lip syncs for, you know, when she probably didn't have a chance to win. And I was kind of like, ooh, because Angie kind of takes that personally against George's here too, um, which seems to be a trend with her getting, you know, kind of taking things a little personally <laughs> in, in this sort of situation. Mm -hmm. But um also like it just it feels like this came out of nowhere too um jack what were your thoughts on this whole little kind of mini storyline we got here with angie this episode for her being Miss Delusional? um i disagree with you like i felt like the delusion thing was like not out of nowhere because like she's she like has this feud or whatnot with with uh with roxy and um we're kind of all like Okay, but it's like not really like a feud feud. It's just like this did happen. It is okay. Like you blocked her first, she blocked you back. It's all cool. Like chill. But she's like, I took this very personally. And I and I think we were all like when she was talking about how upset she was getting blocked the second time. At least for me, I was like, girl, you need to get over yourself because like this is just a block for a block. It's like it makes complete sense. She told you straight up to your face, like there was no hate about it, you know, and then if she, if it was personal, she did have the chance to block her again last week and didn't, and I don't think that she chose to not block her because the other girls were like, oh, like, like, not sure, like, if she's going to actually do it or not, I, I think she straight up didn't, like, 
want to block Angie again because she felt like that would be very rude. So I don't, I don't know. And then like, yeah, Angie has been doing as well in the challenges as she maybe thinks she has been. But I was going to be honest. I thought other girls like Nina could have got it because I've seen her change in for every lip sync. And I'm like, in what challenge, girl? In what <laughs> challenge, girl? And after they saw her lip sync that first time, I was like, illegal, should have been sent home. I know it's no one's going home, but we need to start. Someone's going home for this. Whoever made that choice, you're going home. Let's say thank like, God she didn't come out as a fucking Santa elf this week. Just to fast forward there. Right I now. mean, her outfit was just as bad this week, basically. Except it was, but thank God it wasn't a Santa elf. We can pray. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskers, do you have any thought here on this uh, delusional edit coming from Angie? Because like, like I said, I, I, I feel like maybe what you're referencing there, Jack, at least, at least from my perspective, was them giving Angeria like that that winner's confidence that you kind of get, you, you see from the winner. Like, the winner's always going to be a confident person. They're always going to be portrayed as confident. And I feel like that's what I was getting from Angie. Um, I don't know. Is is Angie the villain? Whiskers, is, is Angie the villain? Is Roxy our hero? I don't know. I'm Team Angie kind of through and through here. Like, I, I get that she feels kind of, like, attacked i feel very attacked here um just i don't know i i think a lot of it is in her head um she's i guess prone to to getting in her head and it just makes things like 10 times worse so i i can relate to that um but i i can see why she feels a little attacked and i don't know if all of the reasons are really valid um like for the the confidence thing like of course you should be confident in like coming back for all stars in a drag queen competition and like the changing thing I am totally an advocate, even for Nina, for for changing for every single lip sync. <laughs> like, if you're there, even if there's no chance you're going to win, you have no idea what they're going to do with the editing of the episode. We've had stranger results before. So if I was there, I would be changing no matter what, ready to go with the plan for the lip sync, because they haven't been that good this season. So I don't know, maybe some other people should get in the lip syncs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like tying it to survivor. It's like, if you have an immunity idol in your pocket, if you get any sort of inkling that there's a chance that you could be voted out, you better be playing that thing. We saw it in this season and a lot of people went home. Um, so I, I don't know. This is obviously less stakes with like, if you're probably not going to win, j just not putting on or putting on a lip sync outfit. But I, I'm, I'm an advocate for just always, always be prepared. I wonder how many oh, how many outfits you gotta bring to have that many outfits. Oh, it's them yeah. For the lip I wonder sinks. if they have a limit. Also, many for all stars. <laughs> yeah, that's also your runways. <laughs> that's that's like a that's a full on like month's worth of clothes, girl. It's a lot. Yeah, but, I, I get, but if you I bring it, it, you might as well use it. I get it. I get it. I, I'm 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 of two different mindsets of it. Um, I I, I can see it either way. I I think I'm just used to like the old. I won't say old school, but like kind of how we do it in just the regular drag race where they get whatever they have on. If you have your face painted blue and you're pretending to be part of an egg's nest, well, guess what? Your lip syncing is hurt. <laughs> like it's happening. So like, I, I, I kind of like that. But, you know, I guess that's the, the glow up of all stars is that, oh, you have the opportunity to do this and do this too. So, I mean, I guess there should be perks and differences and things that they could do there. But, Nina, come on, an elf. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, actually, I do want to talk about Nina a little bit more here because I do think she becomes um, a little bit of a center of, uh, I wouldn't say drama, but uh, part of the, yeah, I guess the drama for the episode, I guess we could say, um, because when it comes to the order here, um, oh, well, actually back up a couple seconds here, uh, because when you find out that Georges, of all people, ends up winning the uh, mini challenge, gets herself an extra badge, finally gets her second badge here, and along with that, gets to choose the order for the roast. Um, and typically, when roasts go, they always say the hardest positions are the first, send it out, and the last um, to close the, store, or close the show out. Um, so basically, that's kind of where this kind of drama stems from. Um, Chanel is chosen to open the show, which she actually takes head on because she is ready to get badge. She wants it. We're all praying for Chanel to get that badge. Um, most because we all want to go to Chanel's Christmas party at the end of the year here. But Chanel, we are rooting for you. And I was very, very excited that she was very confident to take it on, uh, 
the first position here. Um, where the drama kind of comes out here is Nina is chosen to go last, and it turns out here we find out that Georges has kind of always had a target out for Nina, which I thought was kind of hilarious to learn here. Um, so uh, they kind of have a little... I wouldn't say like a back and forth or whatever, but they do have words here and there. Um, and Nina kind of starts getting in her head because she feels like she's not really an insult comic. She's a comedy queen, but she's not like somebody that is going to be mean to people. So she's wondering how she's going to make this dynamic closing based on this whole fact. So now she's feeling shaken and now her eyes are set on Georges as a possible future target. Um, Whiskers, what were your thoughts here on um, all this going down for Miss Nina this episode? I've been living for Georges just having this target on the back of Nina's head. Like, I I don't know. It's just, it's so funny every time it's brought up. Um, and I guess you kind of see it come into play and maybe the arc is finished. I hope it's not finished. I kind of hope we we hear more about the story and maybe Nina reciprocates some some targeting against Georges and Georges is maybe proving she's a threat more. So I'm excited to see where the storyline goes with it. Um, I thought it, it's, it, it's just kind of fun, fun drama for me. It's kind of coming out of nowhere. George is possibly being a front runner here. Like Jack, right. what, what were your thoughts here while this was going down? Um, my, my first thought was like, Oh, Georges going for Nina. This is amazing. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Georgia's good for her because she won a challenge where she knew more about the girls. Clearly, there was a lot of questions asked that we didn't see based on the points. Um, but, you know, what was funny is that at the beginning, like, I was talking to some friends and I just felt like Georgia wasn't really ready for this, kind of. Like, maybe she was, like, too new and still fresh. And so to see her get a badge and start pulling a, like, you know, she's a little ahead of sort of some people, I was like, Okay, good for her. I liked that she wanted to make the list. She said, I have one goal in mind. Well, I guess two. She wanted to put herself uh, second or third. Like, you know, she wanted to position herself well. And she wanted Nina in last place. She was like, I want Nina to have the hardest time possible. I hope she trips and falls and, like, flat on her face. So she gives her this hard position to be in. And I was like, okay, understandable. Like, totally get it. I'm not sure if I would have put myself after Chanel, but I mean, that totally her decision, her call. And for the most part, I think most of it made sense other than the fact that she's still going for Nina. I don't understand. He's got one bad. She ain't never winning a lip sync unless um, I don't even know a type of song that she could, maybe a Broadway song she could win beating Georgia or Plastique. And I don't know. Who, who do like a monologue again? again? Maybe like one of those monologues they might do, you know? I don't know. Are they going to know the lyrics to it? <laughs> um, <laughs> if they uh, put the right version like, on the iPod. Know, <laughs> well, if they do the same version on the iPod, maybe. I, uh, I, I think she made a good choice. I thought it was... I don't think it was a, a bad choice either, just because, I mean, um, if anybody again does kind of stand a, a natural you know, advantage in these kind of comedy challenges would be Nina, because she is a comedy queen, and it's what she kind of does. She's has probably the most practice at it out of everybody here, and is what I would say probably the most natural at it, so um, I, I don't hate her strategy for this, too. Um, and at the same time, though, too, like, she also has to think that your goal is to get to the top three. It's not necessarily to just cut off the person who has the most badges all the time, because then it's becoming, you know, it, if you're, at some point, Letting Roxy get away and just let her take off with badges isn't a bad thing for you. Because as long as you're second or third, that's all you need to really worry about. So at some point, your strategy is going to start to be to hinder those that are close to you or have the ability to overtake you. So um, I, I don't think this was a bad decision for Georges at all. And it's kind of like giving Nina the snip um, without, you know, having the scissors. So um I, I, I'm actually very surprised this episode to say that Georges could possibly, um, you know, be rising up this list here very quickly. Um, and, and she also, um, something else that she does this episode, and I think um, at least we get, a, I'd say, some montages from our three people that I think we might be most worried about here, um, which are the less confident girls, are Georges, Plastique, 
Roxy. Um, Gorgeous and Plastique, they choose to embrace the critiques that they've gotten in this episode and choose to really lean into characters. While Roxy, she's also very determined here to do well, um, because one, she's always struggled during these types of challenges, um, so she knows that this could be just her Achilles heel right off the way, so she wants to obviously conquer that. And secondly, she also knows now that she's out in front, she could be snipped again if she's not up top, which she is right to be worried because there's a moment where her arrival in Jiria is on main stage and she gets a bit of a pep talk from Michelle and the guest judge Ruta Lee. Um, so at that point, it feels like Angie's, um, you know, confidence really starts to skyrocket off after that point. Um, we get a moment with Roxy in the workroom too before the challenge where she kind of, I think, is attempting to distract the other girls and, and kind of use the same reasoning that I used earlier there to be like, oh, you shouldn't target me. There's other people that are, you know, going to do well in other challenges here, um, which I, I don't think was a bad idea here. Um, Whiskers, what were your thoughts here on Miss um, uh, Roxy's uh, attempts to escape being snipped here? And do you think she was going to be successful? I don't know. I think at this point, if you're Roxy in the competition, it's going to be hard to to avoid the, the scissors at this point. Um, just because, one, like going into the competition based on reputation, you come in as Roxy Andrews, there's a target on your back, no matter what you do in the competition, no matter what I, what she did on All Stars 2, how that was kind of a meme that she was just kind of dragged through. She's still like a household name and is always going to be a target. So now add that over the past few weeks, she's been racking up the badges and has the most in the competition now. So I, I don't think there was absolutely any way that she was avoiding getting snipped in the next couple of episodes um, and just being a target for the rest of the season in general. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it's smart of her to try to kind of lessen that target a bit, but I think it, it kind of wouldn't have mattered much anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of am a very similar mindset. I, if it wasn't this episode, it was probably going to be next episode. But, um, Jack, what were your thoughts here of uh, seeing Mix Roxy here in the literal Jinx Monsoon position of All-Stars 7? I don't know if I'd say that, but... Um... I mean, she's the front runner. Oh, oh, well, yeah, she's the front runner. Like, Is she being yeah. favored by production? Maybe. I no. don't know. I think there's lots of people that are being favored by production here, but, you know, is she solely being favored by production? No, but still. No, nah, if, if you're going to be favored <laughs> by production, you'd, you'd have won earlier on. And so, it, no. Um, I don't think like that. I, I think the, that she's kind of smart trying to figure out a way to get this off her back. I think, honestly, the only way that she gets to not get snipped this week is if Georges, Nina, or Plastique end up in the top two, because Nina is now worried about Georges. Georges is still on Nina's ass, and Plastique is her doll. So, I mean, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna snip your doll. Like, come on. Maybe you oh. can't snip the doll. Exactly, you can't snip the doll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, still has to Nigeria. Oops, spoiler alert. Um, well, you know what? <clears throat> On that note, uh, let's go ahead and get to our uh, runway performance, or sorry, our uh, roast performances, as well as our, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss the runway at Sam Penfee, why not? Um, so this week's runway category is Atomic Blonde, which um, I feel like we got uh, a lot more atomic than we did blonde, but, you know, um, it, this was a category. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily my favorite out of what we've had so far this season, because we've had some really good ones to start us off, so. Um, as much as I would say the um, uh, lip syncs are not hitting, these runways definitely are. So, um, And may I just go down to say, this roast, I, I, I think I need to go back and maybe like fact check this for sure, but this could possibly be the best roast in the history of RuPaul's Drag Race. Any thoughts on this? Because I thought these people all did collectively really, really well. Like, this is one of the first times I've really, like, laughed out loud at one of these roasts. Um, Jack, what are your thoughts overall, kind of, on how the night went? Um, I don't care if it's, like, technically not the best roast ever, according to other people. This was by far the best roast I've ever been. Even the people who, like, you know, sometimes you want to see someone fail just because, like, it makes good drama or, like, someone's like, 
Ugh. But like even the people who were, I guess, quote unquote, failing, no one failed, but like the people who were towards the bottom of the rankings, like they still did an excellent job. There were just a few, like a flop or two here that no one really even noticed too much. It was just like we saw this or that, and or your presence wasn't as strong. It was a great roast. It was the best roast that's ever happened on RuPaul's Drag Race stage in the U.S. at the very least that I can remember of all time. So, and I was really shocked by the three girls specifically that we all thought weren't going to do well. George's Plastique and Roxy all fucking killed it, and I was shocked because. We know that there have been problems with all of them in the past when it comes to speaking, especially on on the main stage, to, well, there's a crowd there, so kudos to them especially. I, I definitely agree. I think there's just, I think it's, it's the fact that we had maybe expectations set up for a lot of these people, and each and every one of them, I think, blew my expectations away. Um, Whiskers, what were your thoughts here just kind of overall? Yeah, I mean, the producers and the editors of the season must have been just absolutely loving how this episode went because the storylines and the story arcs that had the resolutions um, from like Plastique, Roxy, Georges, everybody that did bad in their roast in previous seasons was, like killed it and overcame something. And Georges had a much shorter arc as in last episode. Rue gave her the advice to kind of like play a more butch character and just do like the Georges things. Um, and it, and it worked out and it, like, that's like the classic drag race trope that like what Rue says, like if you get kind of given some advice, um, you better use it in the next episode. And it really paid off for George's here. Uh, this was my favorite episode of the season so far. Uh, definitely exceeded expectations. A roast episode. I feel like I'm, is usually not something I'm super excited going into it. I'm like, okay, yeah, there's going to be a couple that'll probably do well, but it's going to be like cringy at some points, which the cringe is kind of fun sometimes. Uh, but we, we definitely got no cringe this episode. Everybody did a really fantastic job. Uh, we do our rankings every week here, but I was really struggling to put somebody in last um, just because everybody did really well. There were some, I, I don't find myself laughing out loud too often, but I, there were probably like, four maybe five that i actually like chuckled out loud at um and there were a couple i was like i almost had tears like rue in my eye for a couple of them so th this was a really good roast um i just i really liked this episode overall the runways yeah weren't great lip sync was i thought the lip sync was okay um but the, the i just overall i really enjoyed the roast and i really enjoyed the episode Mm -mm. Let's get right into it, y'all, because uh, I want to go ahead and let's, uh, let's give these queens some flowers tonight. Um, let's start with Miss Chanel, who had to open the show, and she had, um, again, probably one of the hardest jobs as setting the tone. And um, as far as that goes, I felt she brought a lot of good energy as um, for opening the show. Um, I didn't get any nerves from her whatsoever. It's very clear here that she does this for a living. Um, I felt very comfortable just kind of watching her on stage. Um, I... I don't know if I laughed a whole lot of any of her jokes. Like, I did find that some of them pretty amusing. Like, when she said Carson's cheeks uh, were Michelle's old boobs. Um, and then she said she was going to make a gay joke. You know, but fuck it. Um, like, I thought those were cute. Um, but I did feel like some of her jokes had, like, really long setups. Um, and it, it kind of took a little bit while to get there. And maybe they didn't hit as hard as some other people. But I, I thought she started out the roast well. And I really enjoyed her confidence and just her stage presence overall. And as far as her look goes, um, I will be honest, I don't really like this look. Um, I think she is one of the ones that, like, like I kind of said earlier, when it comes to this category here, she leaned in, I think, far too into the atomic and not enough into the blonde. Um, and I, I, like, if this was a Mad Max category, okay, sure. But this is kind of also giving me very similar to, like, her Scorpion look that she had earlier. So, I, I, of the girls that did, like, this whole, like, Mad Max old, like, camo, like, whatever you want to call this style, um, what is it, post-apocalyptic, um, as, uh, Deshaun would say, or, what was her name? LaShawn <laughs> Beyond. LaShawn. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my god, I missed LaShawn. I know here, LaShawn was my favorite in episode one, and then she got eliminated in episode two, and I was so sad. Um, <laughs> now I can't even remember her name. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't really like the look as much there. Um, but I thought Chanel did solid here for the roast. Um, Whiskers, go ahead and start us off with your critiques on Chanel tonight. 
Yeah, Chanel is clearly a professional. I mean, as many of these queens are, but Chanel knows what she's doing, and you can tell that. She was very confident. She had some funny jokes. Um, I wasn't really, like, LOLing too much at them, but you could tell they were thought out. She had, like, a clear goal in mind. I think she achieved that. She had some good ones that you mentioned. Um, and it, it was just, like, a solid job for me. And for the look, I, I didn't hate it. Um, for Atomic Blonde, it's not what I expected. Like like you said, Renegade, it was really, really heavy on the Atomic. But I don't know. I almost take Atomic Blonde in like a, a different way. And the, the looks are kind of like half and half. Like half the girls went where I would, my mind goes for Atomic Blonde. And half of them went like post-apocalyptic. I can't say it the right way now. A pop No, it is the right way. Um, yeah, that's that's the correct drag voice way to say it. Um, but I feel like we've just seen that so much on the runway that I'm just like so tired of it at this point. And even if there are good looks, I'm not going to love it as much. But Chanel's here, I, I really just compare with Angeria's. I think they had very similar looks. Um, like it, almost to the case where it's like a kimono gate and it's like the exact same look. It, just like upon Angeria turning the corner, it's like, oh my God. Um, but I think chanel out of the two just naturally comparing them i think chanel it fits her better like angeria's i feel like it's wearing her a little bit more um so i i would rate chanel's maybe higher than angeria's but in the grand scheme of things didn't love either either of the looks but i'm really rooting for chanel to get a badge here i hope she does and i hope it's not just given to her um i thought she could have possibly earned it on like the last episode with with nina i think she was for the real estate i thought they did a really good job but I don't, I don't know. She's just, it's, it's just not quite enough from Chanel this season. It's making me wonder what will happen first in terms of like storyline. Chanel getting a badge in All Stars 9 or Liz taking a bowel movement in Survivor 46. Like, <laughs> which will be like, <laughs> we're going to like count like throughout the progression of the season, which one will like happen first before the end? That's all I want to know here. Um, Jack, what are your thoughts here on the Chanel thing? Oh, I, okay, so it's no surprise. I still love Chanel, obviously. I actually, let me start with her. Let's start with her runway look. I didn't d dislike this runway look. I just felt like it was a little too, um, I mean, I was okay with the post-apocalyptic look. Like, I was fine with that. But it, it, there were a few things I would have changed. I, of course, have... I, I don't know. If you're going post-apocalyptic, I I kind of think it's weird that everything is so perfect, but at the same time, like, they, maybe that's the drag element of it. So, like, I can't really be mad. You know, we have great, like, a hair facet thing. We have the good shoulder armor. I, I kind of like what she's got going on. I just think there's a few things I would have done differently, like, maybe to make it a little less... Um, I, I don't want to say put together, but a little less, like, conf like a little more apocalyptic, a little less like couture runway, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I see what you're saying. The blonde part feels like an afterthought, but I honestly can't tell you if like almost anyone did the blonde well, if we're being honest. I think a few girls did it. Um decent, but again, this this category, I, I like the category. I just I don't know, there's something missing with this atomic blonde, like Either everyone needed to go for this, like, either futuristic or apocalyptic kind of look, or we needed to, like, focus heavily on the blonde as well and somehow incorporate that in our outfit. It, the hair, the hair piece brings it together, but the hair is not enough. That being said, she still looks lovely. I like this outfit overall. Um, and her performance in the roast great way to start it. I really was hoping for Chanel. Like, I was like, okay, we got a good performance. Like, this is pretty good. Good setup. Chanel, you did a great job. I think she did a great job and could have had a chance to win this had she really known what was going to be coming up in the roast and had she known that, like, it wasn't just her being a great host. It was also her, like, throwing more mud than what she did. I think she just needed to throw more of that mud and, like, really shade the girls even further. But she did an excellent job. Yeah, I... I and we know Chanel has it in her. We know we know Chanel has that kind of... that. I wouldn't say mean girl side to her, but she could read a girl. If she needs to read a girl, she can. So, 
Um, I, I definitely agree. I think maybe she didn't go in deep enough. Had she gone in a little deeper, maybe, but, you know, um, I, I'm still very proud of Chanel tonight. She's still doing really well, despite, you know, not necessarily, um, getting the love that we, or maybe she deserves to be getting in some of these challenges, who knows, um, but Chanel's moment is out there, and who knows, maybe it'll be the challenge where she gets eight badges, so, um, but I, I think what kind of outdid Chanel tonight was Georges coming out here. Um, and uh, Whiskers, I want you to go ahead and start with uh, Miss Georges tonight on uh, her performance and then uh, talk about her runaway as well, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for Georges, especially I feel like we've we've been kind of ragging on Georges throughout the whole season, maybe maybe in some cases for good reason. Um, but I, I was so happy with what she did this episode. Like I mentioned earlier, that drag race trope, uh, she followed Rue's instructions and she made the change. And it was actually funny. Like it wasn't just like kind of cringy, like, OK, I'm doing this just because Rue told me to. But like she made it work. Um, I thought she had a really good chance of, of winning the episode because of it. And the look, the look really, really is what sold me. Like, this is what I think of when I think of Atomic Blonde. It's kind of like that 80s inspired and just a lot of like pink and metal. And the, the blonde is there. Like, Jack said, the, nobody's really, really giving blonde too, too well. But George's look, I think, was my favorite out of everybody's. It's just, I can't fully explain it. I'm no fashion critic, but it's just it gave me yes <laughs> when it came around the corner. I was like, this reads, this is what I wanted the category to be. Um, this is what I was expecting. And she, she served that. And yeah, the, the roast, I mean, she was great. I thought she, she played up everything that she needed to had some funny jokes um, and just really, really served the character. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Jack, how about you? What's your thoughts on Ms. George's story? I am so pleasantly surprised because, like I told you, I said going into this, I was like, Georges just hasn't shown enough growth. And, like, here she really showed us that she can take the critique, she can go with it, she doesn't just do the exact same thing over and over again. And was her set, like, perfect? No, but it was hilarious. I thought it was, like, I was laughing so much. I think that she could have butched it up a bit more in the look and everything to still be a little bit funnier. Um, but she did an amazing job. I thought she should have been in the top two. Her look is, I, I'm glad Whiskers, like, called it out. Georges is one of the only people that I think really kind of nailed this Atomic Blonde kind of look. I, I agree that this is one of the ways you can interpret Atomic Blonde, and, like, you know, I didn't miss her hair. Like, it was part of the outfit. It is incorporated well. I think the spikes on the side of the hair could be done a little bit better just because they look maybe a tinge crafty and I, I don't want to use that word in a negative context but I know that like that's the word in drag race like when people are trying to explain something is um and the only other issue I had with her outfit was I thought maybe her her um it looked a little diapery maybe just a little bit like a little too much but it, it was so good it like I'm nitpicking like, I loved her outfit I loved her performance she was in my top this week for sure um Definitely think she, for some reason, got outshadowed, and uh, we can talk about that later. But did, she did amazing. Honestly, I, I, last week I think I said it when they initially brought or she started crying on the runway. I'm like, she's being set up. They're totally setting her up right now to have this huge like epiphany at some point. And I was like, as soon as she walked out there, I I was like, oh god. Or I, I wasn't necessarily like, oh god, like, but I'm just like, okay, she's winning because like, look at the way she looks. She took RuPaul's critiques. Rue is just going to put her on the top just for that. Um, so I'm actually, I, I'm, I am kind of surprised she's not top two here. Um, I personally had her third overall in the roast, but oh my god, Georges, I need to give you so much props for this look. I have been talking so much crap about you this whole season. But this look, literally walked around the corner, I had my mouth dropped. I was not expecting this from you. Um, I, I think this is probably the biggest, um, I, I'm still trying to figure out between this one and my other favorite look of the night, which one is officially like my favorite of the night. Um, this one might be a little bit, I would say maybe slightly less fashion compared to the other one that I really like as much. Um, but I just, it, it, this is just a very surprising look altogether from George's. Like this is kind of what I felt like her girl group look should have been honestly like if she came out wearing this for the girl group i would have been like how did y'all not pick them to win um you know um 
But I, I think for me, the biggest selling point is I, I love the fat. I love that giant wig on her head. I love the way it looks. I, I think it sells everything and puts everything together perfectly. So, um, gorgeous, fantastic, fantastic night here. Um, and, and who knows, this could possibly be that uh, epiphany breakthrough moment where she realizes that she needs to start leaning into a character in order to do well in these, uh, acting challenges, which isn't, you know, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, look at our next person who came up who leaned into a character and fucking killed it. Plastique. Um, Jack, go ahead and start it off with, uh, our, um, on Plastique tonight. Um, okay. Where do we even start? Plastique. Once again, serving us, like, everything you want to see. She's hilarious. Like, I can't believe that we, like, how did, how did Plastic go from being like, I'm not funny, I can't do this. She kills two comedy challenges back to back. Like, is this the growth that we've all been waiting for? And, like, has she finally learned to, like, let herself go? I think yes. And rightfully so, she's, like, in the top, and I love her for being in the top. I I think some of her jokes were so funny this week. I was, like, straight up laughing, couldn't hold in my laughs. Like, I was very happy for her. And actually, she has my favorite runway of the week, too. I know that maybe not everyone feels the same way as me, but that hair, where it even has, like, the Playboy Bunny thing in it, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, so... Um, it's just so plastic tiara, and it even, like, she talks about her look coming from, like, a manga, and, like, it's straight up out of that, and I was like, okay, this reference is great, like, it, but it's still about her hair when she removes, like, the face shield, which is an amazing detail, by the way, and more girls should use it. I think this is a fashion trend we all need to follow, because, A, it looks great, and, two, it came from plastic, and if it came from plastic, you can guarantee it's a good one. Um... It just everything's great things match i think her body looks like perfectly snatched here like maybe she could i don't know like i want to say that the only thing she could do is like maybe give herself like a little bit more like definition in like her hips possibly but like she's just showing off how great her natural body is we can still see her ass is great like tens 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 across the board this week for miss plastic for me Plastic did a fantastic job this week. Um, I think she had my favorite read that I've heard, or my favorite roast joke that I've heard in a, a, a forever was her saying that Michelle's vagina is so deep that Leah Remini is still hiding from Scientology in there. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who would even think about that now? Um, and, and, and love it. That was hilarious. Also, when she said that Gottmik put the, the T in the LGBT and then goes trash. Amazing. Um, uh, and I, I love the fact that she leaned into this uh, Sailor Moon character that was basically on her smoke break. So I feel like that's just like if I was to like internalize like myself as a drag queen, I think this might be what I would look like. Um, I would just be eternally on a smoke break, being over everything. Um, it was so good, so good. Um, two weeks in a row too, which is insane. So I, I think it's possible that Plastique could be a comedy queen here. Um, what were your thoughts here on uh, Miss Plastique this week, Wizards? Yeah, I mean, now that you mentioned that, I guess the the character makes more sense to me. That that was one thing I didn't really understand the character too much, but I didn't really care because I I thought it was so funny anyway. Um, I I wrote down the Scientology joke as well. That was definitely my favorite of the night. But just so intelligent, like every joke was so thought out, and she delivered it and like I I would say a fairly natural way. Like it it felt like she definitely had. A script and like you could tell she was reading off the cards but i mean she probably had like six hours to prepare it so we can't really knock her for that um but like that's maybe my only little critique like really really like trying to find things wrong with it um i mean she, like with that said i put her as my favorite roast of the night i thought she was fantastic it was just so intelligent so well done um, and I, I loved it. One of the best roasts we've seen in a long time. It's it's definitely up there with, with the best of all time, for sure, um, of any any type of season whatsoever. And the look, um, again, I didn't I don't know the, the reference too much, so maybe I would appreciate it more if I did. But with Plastique, you always just know it's going to be a super well-constructed, well-thought-out concept, um, and she's going to look great, which she does. But 
I put it I put it kind of more middle of the road. Um, I enjoy looking at it, but it, it wasn't my favorite on the runway tonight. I, I kind of can agree with that. I think out of all of Classique's looks, this might be one of my least favorites, but that's still not saying that it's not an amazing look. Like, I still have her, like, top three here. Um, I also don't really know the reference here. Um, I, maybe I'll do a little bit of Googling. Maybe we'll sleep on it tonight. Maybe we'll wake up tomorrow with, like, a different opinion. Um, but uh, as of now, I think I have two others slightly above her. George's obviously being one of them. Um, but Plastique, oh my god, is just is killing this season um for uh, at least up until like the last five minutes of the episodes i'd say plastique is just uh, it's such a surprise and i'm so so happy to see her doing well here um i actually saw her live at the very first work the world tour after her first season and i had a feeling for whatever reason when they brought her back on it because they didn't bring a lot of other girls back I'm like there's a reason why y'all stuck plastique on here and there's a reason why like she's been avoiding all-stars and she's coming back this season, I think, really, really proving herself here. So um, amazing, amazing, amazing night for Plastique once again here. Um, let's go and get into uh, Miss Roxy Andrews. Um, Jack, I'll let you start us off for um, your thoughts on Miss Roxy tonight. Oh, my God. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Miss Roxy Andrews has this curse on her that I think, like, really, they made a parent in this episode that it was like, so Miss Roxy Andrews has, she flopped the roast in her original season because, like, she was shady, but she wasn't that funny. And then on the roast in her second, uh, in All Stars 2, like, her second appearance, she was by herself and she was supposed to be hosting it and she didn't get in the jokes properly and she fumbled with lines. So she also ended up in the bottom there. So this was, like, her redemption challenge. She's like, I need to do well on this. I need to prove that I've grown. I need to prove that I have what it takes. And then Roxy hits it out of the park for us. Like, it's hilarious. Rue can't stop laughing. You know, she has she has joke after joke that just, like, is so funny. You know, she has the one where she's telling RuPaul, she's like, I know it's hard for you to, like, remember us. I'm Roxy, the girl with the wig reveal. Like, it was... <laughs> so funny i just uh i don't know this was this was one of the, like one of those i mean the roast episode altogether this time was just so great and then it was just so funny from everyone as far as roxy's look goes it's not my favorite of the week but again it's it's giving more of that um post apocalyptic kind of idea although hers differs from chanel in the sense that like this girl, I guess, has gone through it all, and she's skinned some animals, and she's she's not really wearing too much, just, like, keeping the fur on for a headpiece, for her arms, her, uh, like, sash, and, like, her, for her shoes, so it, it's, like, fashionable, but it doesn't really make sense, and the blonde feels like an afterthought again, but... <sighs> Other than, like, Georgia's and Plastique, I think hers, like, the blonde kind of is, like, I, I just think the blonde wasn't really, for some reason, it wasn't really thought about this week by a lot of the girls. Um, as far as the outfit goes, though, I'm actually a fan of this outfit. I, again, it's not, like, towards the top of my list. Well, it's, like, right in the middle. Um... I think the one good thing is that she is wearing the outfit instead of the other way around because some of the girls did feel not as not as great on the runway with that. But um, there's definitely more that could have been done here. It, again, it's it's kind of simple, but at least it looks good, and I can give it points for that because I have critiques on almost everyone's outfit this week. I don't think it was our greatest runway, that's for sure. Of um, this might be one of the weakest runways as far as this. Uh, season, but I I gotta say, I think the only reason that I didn't see Roxy winning this challenge this week was because her runway maybe pulled her a little bit further down from the other girls, but she did an amazing job either way. She broke her curse. She is the third girl of the three girls who we all kind of expected to tank this, who just knocked it out of the park, so good for her. Yeah, I you would agree with you on the... Uh... On, on the look here um it was giving me more uh, it, even uh, like even chanel's kind of was giving me this a little bit with like the fur 
but it kind of was giving me maybe more like nomad, like cave woman, like like hunter gatherer ish, more so <laughs> than you know, like and to me, Atomic Blonde is a little bit more futuristic. I feel like a little bit more like superhero ish, a little bit more just like. Um, I, I don't know. Like the, I feel like the the people that went the old school direction. Like I get why Roxy did because she kind of, you know, she makes all of her own stuff. So I wouldn't expect her necessarily to, you know, pop out with like a, a Fifi O'Hare or yeah, Fifi O'Hare. That's Fifi. Yeah, Fifi. Mm-hmm. Um, like when she popped out in All Stars Two with that like gigantic cosplay futuristic look. Like, I'm not expecting her to pop out with anything like that because she makes her own stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say this is a, a very gorgeous to look at look. Um, I think she looks beautiful in it. Um, I don't know if I necessarily like it for the brief as much as some of the other ones, but also like I, said, I, I think everybody that kind of did this whole Mad Max um, old uh, you know, I, I, whatever we're, we're saying post apocalyptic look. Um, I, I don't know if I necessarily vibe with their looks as much as I did with the others. So. Um, I do have Roxy kind of at the bottom of my list um, when it comes to that, but um, we'll we'll talk about my opinions on her roast here in a second. Well, listeners, I want to know what your opinions were on this Roxy today. Yeah, super happy for Roxy with the the story arc of the roast going well. I really thought she would be in the top two, just because I don't know, maybe just because the connection from the old All Star season and season five, for that matter. Um, just with her not doing well in either of those challenges, and she finally like killed the roast and did really well. Um, I said the Scientology joke was my favorite, but now that I think of it, and just the like the reaction from everybody when she said, "I am Roxy, the wig reveal one," like that is so funny, and that's like a Drag Race reference um, because Rue doesn't remember any of the queens' names, even like Jinx, who won a season. But I get it. There's like five million queens. Uh, but it was, it was just so funny that she did that and kind of was like confident enough to kind of go at Rue in that way. Um, which I feel like Rue gives less and less of a shit each season and becomes like crazier and it's just like crazy grandma's drag race and I love it and I hope it continues to get that way more so. Um, but I, I don't know. I just I lived for her roast. I thought it was so good. So well done. I'm really happy for her. Um, and for the look, it wasn't great. It was. I, I like that she tied in blonde elements too. Like it's kind of her outfit is kind of like at least gold and blondish, um, but it's not atomic blonde. Like I, I guess I'm pretty specific on it. Atomic blonde, I expect you to look like Georgia's did, and kind of like that '80s punk, like pink and shiny and just I don't know. I like I expect everybody to come out like that, and I didn't really get the apocalyptic angle as much. And the, this one, it's not fully apocalyptic either. It's just. I don't know. It's just, it's not giving for me at all. So it was definitely, it wasn't my least favorite, but it was towards the bottom of my list for looks for sure. So maybe, yeah, that is what took her out of the top two, but I I was surprised at the top two. I did not fully expect the top two that we got. I'm not mad at it, but I, I did expect Roxy to be in there with the roast performance. I, I did kind of. I could have seen a case for Roxy to win. I could see a case for Georges to win. Um, I could see a place for Plastic to win. I could see a place for our other person that ends up in there. Um, ultimately, um, getting in there. Maybe not as much as the others, but um, maybe they were taking runway into account. Who knows? But if they were, then I, I think one of these people probably wouldn't have been in the top two anyway. Um, just my opinion on that. But um, I know y'all love the uh, the her calling out Rue joke. Um, I don't know why I loved the fact when she was like, um, Angeria, I know you named yourself after Paris because you've always wanted to go there. And you have Van in your name because you've always lived in one. <laughs> 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 that was good. That, that, that is what I'm expecting for roast jokes. That made me fucking cackle like so hard. Like that was so good. Um, I, again, I, I could almost shed a tear because it feels like such a full circle moment for her. You know, to to fail her first um, roast, have the the rig reveal, and now she's doing an amazing roast, making a joke about that same reveal. So uh, it's such uh, it, you can't really even write. I would say write this kind of stuff. Like this is a, a full circle personal moment that I, I I'm sure is a just a huge personal victory for Roxy himself there. So um, very happy that we all got to witness that tonight. Now you can't write the doll. You can't read the doll. You can't. You can't write it either, though. Oh, yeah, no, you can't write that doll story. 
this is going to be if Roxy wins, her arc will easily go down as probably like one of the best. Like we look at like people like Roger O'Hara who has like multi story arcs and things like that. Um, Roxy's mm-hmm. feels like Raja's. It had Raja actually won All Star six. Um, <laughs> you know, like, but hers is broken apart three seasons. So I, Roxy would just be such a great winner. I would be so happy, so happy if Roxy won. Um, but we still have half of a season to go, so that could all change. Um, but again, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic night for Miss Roxy. Um, let's talk about Miss Vanjie. Um, cause I'll be honest, I kind of thought Vanjie might have been tied for the weakest tonight. Um, I, I, maybe it's just cause the first five, four performers, four performers, yeah, the first half was just so strong. I, I feel like anybody that goes in the second half, now your struggle is being compared to everybody that came before you. And if you don't have a set that's necessarily as strong, you're going to want to go earlier in the show so that way it, a lot of your, you know, your weaknesses can kind of maybe be overshadowed. Um, or, or not, I would say not overshadowed, but not as pointed out, not as visible, because you're not going after people that just kind of slayed it. And we just saw like three, four people in a row that just slayed this. And then like Vanji popped up here and she's just kind of giving me more Vanji. Um, she doesn't seem as prepared. She feels like she's just mostly reading her cards. Um, and also I feel like kind of the way that she phrased a lot of her jokes felt more like she's like in like the workroom having like a, a, a spat with somebody versus like telling a joke kind of thing. Um, like it, it's, it, I think I'm just nitpicking because everybody else. I mean, everybody did so well, um, but I'll, I think Vanjie's was probably the first one where I was just sitting here smiling and, you know, just happy, um, but not, like, laughing at all whatsoever. Um, Whiskers, what were your thoughts here on uh, Miss Vanjie? I I don't know. I kind of thought Vanjie's roast was a little funny. I think I may have enjoyed it more than more than both of you, but, I mean, not to say it was my favorite. I think the top four that i had were probably there was like a a decent gap between like the top four and the rest of the people but they were all good um like like we said it was like one of the greatest roasts if not the greatest of all time so it's it's hard to kind of split hairs here but vanjie's i liked just because it was so different it was kind of a, a break of pace i feel like a lot of the roasts we saw today were very like calculated and very thought out and miss vanjie's never going to be the person to do that so i feel like it was very true to her um and what and what she did and i I thought it was funny i mean it's just vanjie so vanjie can really say anything it'd be funny but i mean there there was kind of like she had a a set plan for the most part as much as she could do um and i i don't know i just i just enjoyed it we i went off vibes and i i enjoyed the vibes for the most part some of it was kind of weird but (laughs) that's vanjie that's that's who she is um but her runway actually i really enjoyed it was um not my favorite of the night but it was top three for me um i just something about it i don't know i just thought it was fun it was kind of that like pinks and purples kind of out there the wig could have been more um but i mean with with short hair i think it's it's giving everything that you'd want for atomic blonde for short hair i i probably wouldn't choose short hair here unless if it was kind of in a mohawk or something punk like that. But I, I think she did with it the best thing that she could with that piece. Um, and I, I don't know. I just liked it. I like the, the outfit. It's kind of chaotic and colorful and fun. And um, yeah, just, just going off a lot of vibes for Vanjie tonight. But I, I thought it was good overall. I feel like that's just Vanjie. She's just all about vibes. Like, you either vibe yes, with her or you don't. absolutely. Um, I still love Vanjie. I, I'm just realizing that um, when it comes to a lot of these challenges, I, I, I'm i expecting maybe a little bit more... I, I think there's this okay, a critique that constantly kind of sticks in my head now after I heard it was um, at the beginning of all or, uh, season 16 when they called out Mirage, and they're like, so, Mirage, your performance was great, but you could do this performance three times, and it's going to be different every single time. That's Vanjie for me. Like, she's going to be great, whatever she does, but it's always, it's, you're never going to, like, go, like, you want to watch your favorite movie and see your favorite movie. Well, you're never going to see the same movie with Miss Vanjie. She's going to do slightly different takes on each single one. So, um, that, that's my only thing with Vanjie is I wish that she could be just, you know, slightly more, you know, co- cohesive with situations, but 
Um, I think you're right. I, I really like this look on her. Um, if this was anybody else walking on out in this, I would probably, I, I mean, I'm still kind of questioning what it is, but, um, for some reason, the, I, I know you said that you probably want bigger hair on this one. Um, I like the kind of like whatever look that she's going for here. Cause it's giving me more like classic era on the top and then like futuristic, whatever the fuck this dress is giving me on the bottom. Um, I, Probably, honestly, um, in most other runways, maybe not have ranked this as high, but I definitely love this more than anybody that did any of the post-apocalyptic looks. Um, it's better than Nina's look. I have her uh, pretty, I'd say, pretty comfortably in, in, in the middle at number four, um, as far as this goes here for Miss Vanji. Um, what are your thoughts on Miss Vanji tonight, Jack? Um, okay, so Vanji is hilarious. Let me start by saying that. Vanji... I think you hit it right on the nail, like on the head, when you brought up the Mirage critique from season 16. And it's very much that. I think the issue with Banji is that once you've seen her, you kind of know what the blueprint is going to be of what's going on. And it's great. It works well. But in a competition setting where versatility is key, in my mind, it's getting a little repetitive, right? Like, we know that she's going to come out, she's going to be Vanjie, she's going to be loud, she's going to be herself, it's going to be funny. But in a roast a situation, that can work. But I think she started off a little rough with, like, the N-word joke. It didn't really take as well. And then she had a couple times, like, I, like the Jeffrey Dahmer joke was like a, ooh, maybe not that, like... I think there was things that we were like, okay, so there were a couple flops here. She had, I, in my opinion, she had the worst roast of the night, like not by like a mile or anything, because she still did a good job overall. And had it been like a normal season, she definitely wouldn't have been in the bottom regardless, you know? But um, everyone just did so well that it was kind of like, I guess a, kind of a saving grace in a way for anyone who's coming up next because like all of a sudden you remember, oh, she didn't hit the ball out of the park kind of thing. Maybe got to second base and then she got out when she was trying to slide into third. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, uh, it was, it was an okay performance. Um, pretty good, but a couple misses. Now her runaway look I like her runway look, and I actually agree with you 100%. I think the small hair works extremely well with this look. I do have a big critique about this look in the sense of the white boot does not need to be there, and in fact, it is so distracting from the rest of the look that it really upset me. It's one thing that, like, her corset underneath kind of part is, like, very close to her skin color, and we can tell it's the new delusion, and that is totally fine. If she wanted to do a new delusion there, she should have found a very, like, similar boot, like, that was tan and stuff, so we can keep that illusion going. I'm not really sure what the white boot is doing for it. And the real issue is, as far as Atomic Blonde goes, I don't know why this is in the category. It kind of feels like it... Like, I, I mean, it kind of fits the thing, the theme, but, like, it's kind of similar to her Starry Night look for me, where I'm like... It's not the theme enough, you know? So for me, even though I really love this look on Vanji, minus the boots, get rid of the boots, it looks great. Um, I had to rank it lower just because of the category. I didn't see Atomic Blonde. I didn't get, like, the 80s thing, really. I didn't get the idea of, like, this is in the future after the atomic bomb has blasted. This is, like, right after the atomic bomb has gone off and it's post-apocalyptic. Like, I was like, I don't know where this is from. Beautiful, beautiful gowns kind of thing, you know? Like, <laughs> unfortunately, like, she and she didn't have the worst look of the week, even though I think hers was not even in the, really the category. She still got sixth place for me because I think two other girls just did it worse. Um, but, you know, Vanji not being in the top this week is not the most surprising thing. Um, she really needs to work on that organization. I think she has more growth to do, and that's, I think, why I don't think we'll see her in the top three at the end. But that's my personal feelings. I mean, uh, I don't know. I think, I think the jury's still out on Vanji. I think she still has potential. You never know. I mean, if Georges could get it together... Uh, well, I'm not going to say if, George, if Georges can, anybody can, but, you know, um, if, if somebody can learn in the middle of the competition, 
then Vanji has the ability to to embrace these critiques as well too. So, um, and actually now the more I'm looking at this look, you know, it's kind of why I, I think I don't mind it as much because it's kind of giving me. Um, whereas like the other girls went maybe like um, like the post apocalyptic. Um, this is kind of giving me more like I don't know like future undersea like octopus bombshell that does like a like also models you know kind of thing i don't know like it like squid but make it beautiful with blonde you know like i i don't i don't know i i, I something so about category well i i think that the thing with the the wig i think what she's trying to do to do it i think maybe the way she's interpreting it is like like i said like a bombshell versus like a like a sex mm, kid like okay. like elegant looks versus like a you know the the superhero type look because the first thing i noticed when she walked around it felt like she was giving very much i wouldn't say like old hollywood kind of thing but just like it feels like she's trying to feel like glamorous with it you know and that's kind of what i'm getting from like the hair the makeup the, the way she's carrying the outfit so um i i don't i, I don't hate this look on Manji. um the more i'm looking at it now actually the more i'm really liking how the purples and the pinks kind of mix together and with the blonde hair, I think it looks good. I just, I agree. the The white boot is distracting. Um, but yeah, you know, um, who knows where Miss Vanjie will end up in this competition here. Um, but I, I, I think we are right though that her lol definitely made the next person, her set, just seem even better because Miss Angeria came up here, and um, I think this could maybe be. Possibly the controversial placement of the night. I think everybody agrees that Plastique definitely should be in the top two, but it sounds like there might be some controversy about Miss Angeria here, though. Um, Whiskers, go ahead and tell us about what your thoughts were on Miss Angeria tonight. Yeah, I thought Angeria was great. I kind of expected Angeria to be great. I mean, I feel like that's why she's been blocked so much this season, because they're kind of expecting, like, she's charismatic enough to kind of blow something like this out of the park. Um... And and she did. She did well. I had her um, fourth, actually, which feels surprising because I'm, I'm an Angie fan, I would say. But um, I thought she did a very good job. Like I, I mentioned earlier, I think there was kind of a, a separation. There were the first four for me and then the last four. But I, like, like I said, everybody did great. Um, the top two I expected um, was probably Roxy and Georges, and then it ended up being Plastique and Angeria. But I'm I'm not mad at it, and I think... Maybe, like you said, um, I maybe rated Vanjie's performance a bit higher than than most of the audience. So maybe it, it kind of took away from Andrea's being better. Like, we didn't have that really low to really high, at least for me. Um, but Andrea's jokes were really funny. I remember the one about Nina's so ugly, like the proctologist <laughs> just puts the finger in her mouth. Um, <laughs> that was one that stuck out to me. So I, I definitely see why she was put in the top two. Um, the story arc with the drama, like Angie didn't really have anything to overcome as far as previous seasons, but she had stuff to overcome in this season, like over the past episodes of kind of being like blocked and just the drama around that and feeling like she's teamed up against. Um, so that was the arc that we got for, for her and I enjoyed watching it play out. Um, and I, I think her top spot was was well deserved, even though on my list she wasn't there. But that doesn't take anything away from it. And and for her look, it wasn't one of my favorites. I think I mentioned talking about Chanel's. I out of these two, just because I naturally compare them, because I think they're pretty similar in a lot of ways. Um, obviously, overall, like fashion style is different, but concept they're the exact same. I think. Um, and I, I think Chanel's is just a bit better because it, it feels like this look is wearing Angeria. Like I could see this look on so many more people, whereas Chanel's, I feel like just fits her a little bit better and fits her aesthetic better than it does for Angeria. That being said, it doesn't look bad. Um, I like it. I think it has this place. It's not a bad look by any means, but I had it at sixth for me. So it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite it was towards the lower end, but Still, still was fine, and I can see why um, she was in the top two, and I think she deserved to be in the top two. You actually just convinced me right now, because I actually had um, Angeria above Chanel initially, um, but the more I'm looking at the two, Chanel's just, it, it does look a lot more, like, fitted to her body, a lot more, like, tailored, a lot, just, uh, uh, actually, Angeria's, like, is more, like, apocalyptic in that it's, like, thrown together and whatnot, but I, I think going back to something that Jack said earlier about Chanel's look, um, maybe being 
you know, the element that her being clean is not pokalock or po- post apocalypse. Oh my god, I'm never gonna figure out how to say this word anymore. <laughs> um, it, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think um, now that I'm looking at it and comparing the two, I think I like the fact that it's clean. I think I like the fact that Chanel's is is just it's nicer to look at. Um, and you're right, this one just kind of feels just like a bunch of other people have worn it before and now she's taken on the mantle and she's wearing the costume now. She's become the new Spider-Man and it's now her costume. So, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, not my favorite look for Miss Angie. Um, but wow, did she have, I think it, if I think Plastique had the, some of the strongest reads of the night, um, and Jerry, I think had the second strongest easily. And I, I think that's probably what they were more looking at. Um, and and the, her confidence behind the way she delivered her jokes. I don't think she looked at her cards once. Like it was, it felt like she was just up there and like she had memorized everything and she was just talking a bunch of shit. Like so, I, I think that confidence and the fact that she did have some crazy reads, like calling Michelle Rue service animal <laughs> and saying that um, uh, that if uh, Georges might have actually been valedictorian if they had a class in sucking dick, um, like like those were those were hilarious. Um, so I I while I was more surprised, I'd say probably by Georges, maybe slightly more entertained by Roxy. I understand why they gave Angie the the top spot here. Um, Jack, do you have any thoughts that you're on Miss Angie tonight? So many. Um, <laughs> um, let's start with her roast. It was really good. Uh, it was actually, it was really good, but I only put it in my fifth place spot because I thought that some of her jokes were really funny, and then I thought a couple of them were such low-hanging fruit that I was kind of like, eh, we'd heard other girls already do it. And I think that's kind of like the issue when you go later in a roast. You really have to like, really have something funny like had plastique gone at eighth place i still would have been laughing out loud at plastics i think because she had such unique jokes and stuff right and and jerry has had a lot of really good unique ones but then some of them kind of faded for me or wasn't as funny for me but i think she did an amazing job um as far as I would say, actually, you know what, the that finger in the mouth joke was probably my favorite joke from her set. It was really funny. Um, I I was expecting her to do well, and I was expecting like Gottmik to do well. Like those were the and me, like those were the two people I was kind of expecting to be in the top this week. If I like before looking at the roast, just because I know like how funny they can be. Um, as far as her runway though. Uh, it's, like, my least favorite of the night, actually, and I'm, I'm so sorry to have to say that, uh, it's, there's something that, um, I specifically don't like in Runaways ever, and a lot of the times it's when there's, like, a string connected to a, like, a, either, like, a lot of feathers or, like, a, um, almost like a, a like, a tail of an animal kind of thing, or just fur in general, and I'll never forget, like, when Taste comes out and her look in UK Season 2, I was like, God, I wish she didn't have those on, or I wish they were done differently, because I think they'd look better. It's just a personal, like, fashion thing that I hate, personally. Like, And for me here, that was kind of replicated in her look. Plus, I feel like I've seen this outfit specifically so much. You know, it kind of just looks like specific kind of uh, tights with the, with the corset. Um, and the fur hanging all about, it's like a little too symmetrical too for it to make me believe it's a post-apocalyptic and the hair did not match. Like I thought she was like, I, her hair reminded me of like a mermaid's hair, you know, like it kind of looks like the crown is in there, which you can't really see that well either. Um, you have to be more closer up to really see the definition there, which I think is like something that could have been popped a bit more on. I just didn't see the unity or the, like, I didn't see this look really coming together. I saw, like, the post-apocalyptic thing. Again, not a fan of, like, how the furs are placed on this at all. And it just felt very, like, we'd seen it before. We'll see it again. I mean, it's it's a safe, it's a safe look. It's a strong, safe look, right? So I don't think it's, like, a... A, like a terrible look it just wasn't for me i didn't like it um we can talk about her placement probably later in the episode because i got feelings about that and i don't want to talk for 15 minutes here 15 minutes there so but really? she did all right <laughs> you can talk what? about it now it's fine 
Okay. She shouldn't have been in the top, and it, every single person in the world was like, what is this? The only reason she's in the top is because of production and selling the storyline, and no one convinced me otherwise because I watched the performance, I watched it again, and I was like, no, not with that performance, plus this runway, and even if just the performance, still no, which I think her performance is stronger than her runway, and I was just shocked. I was like, one of the first times in the history of the world, I never thought I'd have to do this, I never thought I'd have to say this. I do think that Roxy was a little bit, like, snubbed at a win here. That is fine. But I have to defend Georges. Georges was snubbed at a win here, too, because if it wasn't Roxy, it would have been Georges. If it wasn't, you know, those two were the only other people in my mind that could have been in the top two with Plastique. And it even it could have just been, like, two of those three should have been the top two. And I don't even think it was just you know, George is doing better than what we expected from her. I just think her set was funnier. I I do agree with you that Angeria's, like, maybe wasn't on her card as much as Plastique or George's or anyone, but I didn't get this, like, overwhelmingly, like, hilarious kind of reaction that I did from the other girls, and I just, I know that she's in the top two because of storyline reasons, and she needs another badge to keep her relevant for the storyline. I mean, I, I think it's, uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, there's no way to justify it with the runway, because, I mean, if it was, then Roxy would be there, not Angie. Um, but, you know, I, I it's it's hard to say, because, like I said, I, I think Angeria had, that, that proctologist joke was one of the best jokes of the night, easily, without a joke, without a doubt. Um, so it, it's hard to say, I, I think, for me, 100%, that she doesn't deserve it, Um would I have given it to Georges? Yes, but I, there's also, uh, I would say, a few times where it felt like Georges was kind of just, you know, being Georges and doing her typical um, gape jokes, you know, that she likes to do. Um, so you, you could kind of also go back to that, too, that it may be that, you know, I, I don't know if Georges' set for me was 100% stronger. Um, but, you know, I, everybody did so well. And I, I feel like at this point we are probably nitpicking. And to some degree, I, I think you probably are right that there is some great storylines here for uh, Miss Angie moving forward. And we'll, um, we'll kind of touch base on um, the, the outcome of the episode here in uh, just a second here. Let's get to our last two performances of the night. Um, I'll be honest, kind of a eh way to end the night after we had six very, 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 very... Well, well, not six. I'd say five and five very strong performances, and then one okay performance. Um, we had Got Mick come up here, and I think she got screwed a little bit on her placement. Um, had Got Mick on a little bit earlier, I think I would have liked her set a little bit better. But honestly, I, I kind of felt like I was when I was watching Vanjie set here. Um, just uh, going this late here, I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I kind of tuned out <laughs> a little bit here. Um, I can't really, really remember any specific jokes that made me laugh. Um, she had good delivery, um, and she didn't flub any of the other jokes. I just, I didn't find myself laughing really at anything that she said. Um, I will say though, her runway, oh my god, I love this runway look. Um, Gottmik has always, always such a pleasure on the runway. Her and Georges, or it's not Georges, her and, um, uh, Plastique literally going back and forth for who will rule the runway. Um, and I, I think, actually, not, we could throw Georges in there, because I think all three did great tonight. They're my top three for the night. I'm um, still going back and forth as to who is actually my favorite between the two, because they first walked out. Um, Got Mike immediately was one I was drawn to immediately, just because I just, I love the look. I love the titty out. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a hoe. I love, I love the one titty out. Um, I love the, the zombie references, and I, I just, I love the fact that she actually has some blonde hair that you could see here. She's actually an atomic blonde, so um, I really enjoy that there for Gomic. It might might fall a little bit here. I'm still kind of juggling between Plastique and Georges, um, between those three, which are my favorite of the night here, but um, great look from Gottmik. All right, Roast. Um, Jack, what were your thoughts here on Miss Gottmik tonight? Um, Gottmik's Roast kind of tanked a little bit in a way, not like the worst roast of the night. I think she had the second worst, in my opinion, only because she 
I don't know. I don't know if it wasn't that she wasn't as committed or if she just wasn't like into it. Something was wrong. There was like a disconnect and her jokes didn't like hit it out of the ballpark in the way that I think a lot of other ones do. Um, she had some good moments, but it was just kind of disappointing because I think we were all expecting more from her as well. Um, and I think that maybe, you know, some some of the things just didn't hit. I will say, however, this has to be said. Her first gangbang joke or whatever that she talked about, goddamn was Michelle trying to, like, ruin her this episode while trying to tell her not to use the word gangbang. Because, no, it definitely was gangbang of Glee. Like, that was the correct way to say it. Like, why would you say, like, whatever? And I'm so glad she didn't listen to the advice because she knew that this was a piece of advice that she did not need to take because it was so much more successful that she said gangbang, especially because it's like that Glee starts the G, gangbang starts the G. It worked much better. Um, again, her so her brace wasn't the strongest tonight, but her outfit is pretty good. Like this is in my top three. It's not perfect by by like for me, but like it's really good. I see the atomic. I see the like aftermath of the atomic bond right she's cyborg kind of in a way you can see like skin is falling off and there's machine underneath and she's like like a robot zombie kind of idea um the only thing that here that i didn't like i mean i, I like i like the shoes i like how she's the patchwork of like the black and dark blue navy material in her look right like this is um this is really good because she used that color skin that's like very for her, like the white and the black. You can see with the eye contacts and stuff. And this is great. It's um it it's very complimentary. The only issue I have with it is the hair is good. I'm not really sure about the blonde part being like as relevant to the look, but it's a great look nonetheless. It's my third place look of the night. Um Honestly, I come to always expect a great look from Gottmik because we all know her as a fashion queen. Um, and she's definitely doing um she's definitely doing a better job on this season than her original season, where I think sometimes she didn't always show us the fashion that I was expecting, I should say. But um this look is great. I think one of the strongest runways of the night for sure. Um I I think that maybe I'm a little worried for her, though, because she got in her head, and I could see an untucked that she was, like, really upset. I think we all could. And so I'm like, is this going to be a possible start to downfall or dwindle for Gottmik? Because in my mind, she's one of the people that could be in the top three at the end. And now I'm worried, like, is her mind going to shift to, like, not? And maybe that's why we won't have as much, like, storyline for her. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. But... I hope not, because she's been doing a pretty good job so far. You are touching on something that's kind of always had me worried about Gomic ever since, like, the first, like, two episodes, ever since she stopped being the top. She hasn't been relevant at all, whatsoever. Um, like, she's not getting any focus at all. So I'm like, in, unless they're trying to go for, like, a Nymphia Wind arc here, um, which I, I don't think they are, um, I, I don't think... If if we want to just run back on that, I don't think they initially wanted Nymphia to win. I don't think they thought Nymphia was going to be as popular. I'm pretty sure they thought Saphira was going to win, which is why Nymphia got such a shitty edit. Um, they know Gottmik is popular, so they would give Gottmik quite a lot of time if Gottmik was the winner. So I I'm I'm a little worried for Gottmik too. Um, as as well. Um, especially because like outside of like the scissor thing and the start of the episode, what more did Gottmik do this episode? Nothing. What are your thoughts here on Miss Gottmik, though, Whiskers? I love Gottmik, so I know she's always going to slay on the runway, and it's always going to be one of my favorite looks, um, and that holds up here. Uh, she had my second favorite look of the night. I think if you were going to go the apocalyptic, like, shreds, like, disaster aftermath route, this is the way you do it. Um, I like the hair in this, actually, the the kind of long, slicked back um, it's just, it's kind of striking. And it, I mean, the focus here, it's not so much on the hair, which maybe it should be more so for this category, but just the construction, the outfit is super thought out and cool. And just, yeah, like the skin ripped to reveal the cyborg and just every, everything about it. It's always so put together and it's what I've come to expect from Gottmik. So 
she's kind of set a high bar, but has been reaching it, at least in my opinion, the throughout the whole season with the looks. Um, for the roast, the Glee joke I thought was funny. I chuckled out loud at that one. I'm glad she stuck with it, even despite what Michelle did. And Michelle gave a little stank face, I saw. So you just you just knew like with the edit that it wasn't going to go anywhere after that. But yeah, I can't remember a thing she said after the, the Glee gangbang joke. Um, that, was, that was about it for me. And the, the bar was kind of high, but... Um, for Gottmik because I believe Gottmik won the roast on on her original season. I think yeah. that was one of like her highlights. Um, so the bar was high, but we didn't really get any discussion about that. So I guess from a viewer's standpoint, you could kind of tell like, okay, probably nothing's going to happen here, and and nothing really did, unfortunately. Um, it was was on the lower end for me, but the Glee joke actually did bump it up from from the bottom two so i had it in sixth but yeah i mean solid i love got mix so i'm always gonna probably give a little bit of bias but I, I i don't know i don't think i'm giving bias here not putting her as the worst roast um but yeah look look was great roast was not so much but that's okay yeah you know i mean you can't win them all so uh, you know it's unfortunate that Mick didn't get to go back to back wins for the roast but um, you know, Gottmik has had some very other strong points this season, so hopefully um, we'll see some more from Gottmik later on here. Um, but let's move on to our last last roaster for the night here, Miss Nina West. Um, Whiskers, I want you to go ahead and start us off with your opinion on Miss Nina closing out the show tonight. Yeah, Nina had a solid roast. With that said, I put her in last. I put her in last, which I really hated to do. I was really struggling. With like the bottom three for me, um, for where I was going to put everybody, and I ended up putting Nina in last. But I wrote everyone was good, sad face, um, <laughs> which I feel like she she deserves higher. But I mean, in this group, everybody I thought did well, and I just I wasn't finding myself laughing at Nina's jokes. They were almost like too constructed, and it felt like very thought out and planned. And I mean, Nina called it herself earlier in the episode. Everybody was kind of looking at her to be the the one to be in this episode. And she's like, yeah, I am a comedian, but not an insult comic. Like, roasts aren't what she does. So she was kind of knowing that this isn't something that was really in her wheelhouse. Um, and it, it kind of showed. I don't know. She's a professional. Like, it it went well. It was good. It was solid. But it, it just... None of the jokes super resonated with me, and I didn't find myself really, really laughing that much at it. Um, and her look, ugh, I it's just, it's, I don't know. It's very Nina, and it's very, like, I, I love that her style is very, like, just classic, like, what you think of a drag queen to be. Um, but this look, I, I just, I don't really fully, like it doesn't fully read for me. Like I, I get it like with the, the mushroom cloud on the top and it's just, it looks like just piecemeal and put together and boxy. And it's just, it's not my favorite. I want to like it. I really, really am like rooting for to like it, but I put her at the bottom for both, for both the look and, and the rose tonight. But I, I love Nina, but it was not it for me tonight. Well, yeah, I, I gotta agree with the the look. I was not feeling this look here. Um, I, 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 I really, 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 really want to like Nina. Like, I get the concepts. I see sometimes what the vision is. Like, I get the idea of what's happening here, but I'm just the way that it comes out is just it's 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 just it's Nina did an okay roast. I'll say that. She did a good roast. She did an okay roast. She closed the show as well as she could have. Um but I, I, I think where she went wrong for me is the fact that she did like the Ben de la Creme thing where it's like, oh, I'm too nice to make a joke. But instead of that being my character and like letting you kind of like read into that, let me tell you and let me telegraph that and make it very obvious that that's what my character is. Um, and it also felt like none of her jokes were personal. It felt like, like 
like the, when she called Vanjie a washing machine because she had so many loads in her or whatever. Like you could say that to anybody. Like the, none of these jokes that she had really felt like, it, or, or the other joke that I, I thought that was funny that she had here when she said, uh, "Georges's two brain cells are fighting for third place." Again, hilarious. But you could use that to anybody. You could say the Gotmic. You could say that the Vanjie. You could have said that to Nigeria if you wanted to. Who the hell cares? Like, but that would like none of these jokes felt like they were very personalized. Um. So I, I, I had her above Gottmik, and I had her above Angie because she did have those couple jokes that did make me, you know, actually chuckle. Um, but, yeah. I, I think I also had very high expectations for Nina coming into this week, and I'll, I'll just leave it there. I feel so bad. I feel like all I do is shit on Nina, so I'm, I'm, gonna, we're gonna not shit on Nina. Nina did well tonight. And Jack, you go ahead and take it away from here. <clears throat> okay, great. Um, so I actually kind of have a different opinion than y'all do on Nina's roast. I actually thought it was my fourth favorite. Um, because I thought that some of her jokes were extremely funny. I think it took a little bit of time in the very beginning to like kind of get there. I think when you do comedy, especially a roast... Um, you can't just, like, fly through jokes. You have to have a timing when it comes to comedy. And it's something you either have or you don't, kind of. And you can learn it, but it takes a while. I think Nina, for the most part, got most of the timing down well. And, in fact, I kind of disagree with you, Renegade. I think that some of her jokes were extremely pointed and, like, could only be said to that girl. Like, maybe George's joke about the two brain cells and they're fighting for third place kind of thing. I thought that was so hilarious because I was like, now, Georges is, like, dumb. Like, that is her, like, character that we all know. We're like, Georges is dumb. Like, everyone knows Georges is dumb. And I thought that was such a funny thing that, like, her two brain cells were so stupid that they couldn't even realize, like, what place they were going to be in. And I I think the loads in Vanjie is correct because Vanjie is known for being a bit promiscuous, especially when she was talking about, like, maybe she'll ask Brooklyn Heights uh, about shopping or kind of thing. I, I thought that was, I thought it was so funny. I, I really enjoyed her set. Um, was it the best of the night? No. No, it wasn't. Um, but I thought it was pretty good. I thought it, I thought it was kind of on par to Chanel's, but better in the sense that, like, Chanel's opening was good, but she wasn't ready for, like, everything that was going to happen. And Nina, at the end, like, she still, in my opinion, did better than the other three who were um, right before her. So I, I felt like Nina kind of took me away from, like, the mess that was that had happened. And, like, okay, we're back on sailing course. Like, we're ending the show because, you know... Vanjie's hiccup, kind of rough. Gottmik's performance, kind of rough. Nina, like, takes us from that, and we actually laugh and before we leave the stage, and it's great. Um, that being said, though, her luck. So I have to give so much praise to Nina, because I think she incorporated the idea of the atomic blonde in her hair the best of anyone this week. And anything from, like, you know, the hair down, anything below the hair was a problem. Um, so Nina does this thing where she has these, like, in, I think, intelligent concepts. But either someone stole her money, or she's just hiring a good Judy of hers who, like, no one has told her that she's not that great at making outfits, or, like... Something is going on here. The outfits are never good. They never seem like they're really tailored to her size. I don't think Nina ever wants to give herself the chance to be sexy on the runway either. Which, like, maybe she hides behind some of these, like, bigger, boxier outfits. I don't know what it is. We can tell that this is, like, the nuke. It looks good or whatever. You know, the mushroom cloud hair is, like, in my opinion, perfection. It makes so much sense. Um. I like the gloves, and the shoes aren't bad. Um, but, wow, the middle piece is so awful. Um, you know, this is like design challenge bottom. And yet she brought it here, ready to wear for the main stage. 
which he had weeks to prepare for. Wow. Um, you know, it, is, <laughs> it is a talent. It is truly a talent to be this unfashionable, I guess. Um, <laughs> I think we should add it to the list. I'm not trying to hate her. I'm really not, but like, I just think Nina is just like, if you're going here for great looks because of Gottmik, you're in the right place. If you're going here for great looks and Nina's coming out, <laughs> you should get ready to either tell her the truth to her face and be kind about it, or keep lying to her, because someone keeps lying to her. And I don't know who's lying to her, but she needs a friend. She needs a friend real bad. Um, but no, it wasn't even my least favorite look of the night, because I loved her hair so much. Um, it was it does have really from, great hair. Like, it really does. It has hair. amazing hair. Just chop but, off um, the head. I, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I, I thought that her hair wasn't an afterthought, and I think that's enough to put her above Angeria in my head. I, I really do. I mean, I think the outfit's bad. I also thought Angeria's outfit was bad, but one of them at least fit the category more, I guess. So good for you, Nina, for kind of fitting the category. And she does this specific type of drag where it's like it's so conceptual, and it never makes it to the like a good execution, but it does get executed. So it's like a code that still puts out an output, but not what you want at all. <laughs> but you can, you can guarantee that it'll never be what you want. And I think consistency is key. Good on her. Well, yep, she's been very consistent here. Um, I'm, I'm very, very like, if I, if we're going to do like a ranking at the end of the year where we like, or end of the season, and we, like, put everybody's in, like, order. I'm very, very scared that Nina might have, like, the bottom ten looks all together. <laughs> but the top Just ten each one of her <laughs> runways. <laughs> oh, no. Um, well, you know what? Um, let's let's go ahead. We'll, we'll we, yeah, yeah, let's, let's move on here. Um, Nina, Nina's time will come here. I, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that something that she brings out here will, um, give us life eventually instead of constantly killing us. So, um, you know, let, let's go and we'll, we'll, we'll move on here. We got our top two here. Um, so we got Angeria and Miss Plastique crowned as the top two. Obviously, Jack didn't agree. Uh, but Whiskers, did you agree with this top two? I, I'm fine with it, but I it's not what I expected. Just based off of like the the stories we were getting and what I thought, I really thought Georges was going to be there for sure. Um, just because the last episode to this episode, the full story, she made the changes. I thought they were going to reward her for that, and I think that would have been fine. And Roxy, I just really personally enjoyed, and I could see them putting Roxy in the top every single week just because she's so loved, um, and I wouldn't be mad at it. So I, I really thought it would be Georges and Roxy, but um, no, I, I I don't feel any type of way about it being Plastique and Angeria. I was kind of surprised Angeria was there, but overall storytelling, I get it, and it makes sense. And like she did well enough where I can see the justification for her being in the top, so I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I haven't really been up in arms over any of these judging this season. Um, I, maybe I'm just like at a point where I'm just not like as invested in caring as much about it. Like, the, like I'm not winning at the end of the day, so I, I do I really care to get that up in arms about things that like I'm not being cheated out of. I don't I don't really care honestly. Um, but you know, um, what I should be upset about though is this lip sync that we get to one of my favorite old school songs, Be My Lover. And um, we already got a performance of it uh, back in season 13, which y'all forgot. And I don't understand how you can forget. Because <laughs> Denali and Allery killed the sleep sneak. I don't care if it was over Zoom. It was amazing. It was amazing to watch. And I went into this lip sync with very high expectations. And unfortunately, they were all let down once again. Um, I, 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 I get people just like this lip sync here. I... I don't know. Like I, it, for me, it was giving me, flashing me back to UK versus the world too. Anytime I would see Hannah Conda lip sync, she would get like halfway through the song, and she would just start staring at her lip sync partner in defeat because she's like, "Well, I'm not gonna win, so I'm just gonna look at you and get a performance right up close to you because that's about the only thing I'm gonna get from this thing." And literally, we get halfway through the performance, and Plastique literally just. Hands the song over to Angeria because she doesn't know the rap. Again. Again, Plastique. 
this is two weeks in a row where you've impressed us with their comedy challenges, and then two weeks in a row where you have, like, what is, what, what was this lip sync? Dear Lord Plastique, for the love of God, just please, please learn the words to these weird fucking songs that you have to sing this season, please. <laughs> um, we kind of already talked about um, our thoughts on lip sync here, so... Uh, we'll just go ahead and move by pass here and uh, go on to the next part here where Angie is declared the winner yeah, again. Fun, you we already know what you got to say here, Jack. You loved it. You thought it was amazing and beautiful and gorgeous. So um, other than Plasti, she was terrible. Um, what, okay, then Jack, what were your thoughts here? Um, so obviously, Rigor Morris, as uh, a queen once said, Rigor Morris of this week's top two, clearly production, ain't no way performance in the runway equals Angeria, not even with just one of the categories. This makes sense. She's in the top two. Poor Georges, poor Roxy. Um, but the show must have a storyline. We can't just have a front runner constantly doing well. Um, I think Plastique's really smart, though, in this lip sync, because I think that, you know, she's not going to try. She's not going to give the girls anything to think about. Ro- like, she's now tied with Roxy for three badges. But why ban her? Why snip her? I mean, she's got three badges, but she ain't winning the lip sync against you. So maybe you don't want her to get a, a thing, but she doesn't seem like the threat, right? She's kind of like the... For some reason, she's in the in ahead of everyone, but she's like undercover still, for some reason. I was going to talk about... We, we need to talk about Miss Plasti, because all of a sudden now, she literally is in a position here where if she somehow wins next episode, she will be the front runner. And she could possibly be the front runner with no money in her bank account for her charity. <laughs> Great storyline. Look at Jimbo. Um, this that would be absolutely insane here. Um, and, and the reason why that she could possibly have this is because she escapes blocking. Because instead, Angie cuts off Roxy for the second time, and. I get it in terms of, like, numbers, but, like, in terms of, like, the overall gameplay, right? She was just complaining how she got cut off a second time, and, um, you know, how she's gonna take it personally, and she literally cuts off Roxy for the second time, herself, doing it. So, it, it's, it's, feels like, if I'm using this logic here, Angie, then like, it feels like things were possibly going to start getting very personal between Angie and Roxy here. Um, Whiskers, what are your your thoughts here Um, uh, as we head into next week, seeing the second locking and knowing that another acting challenge is on the horizon here? Well, yes, she did block Roxy for a second time, but this one is so much more justified than when Angie got blocked for the second time. I think because Roxy, like we mentioned a little bit earlier, is clearly a front runner, has the most badges, and it just it makes sense. I don't know the other like none of it has been personal. I don't, maybe this one was a little personal. Like I think it made the most sense to block Roxy anyway, and Angie was like, okay, she was like ready to feel a little petty, and was like, I, no doubt in my mind, I'm gonna do this probably. Um, but no, it, I think Roxy's second blocking was definitely more justified from like a moral standpoint, if we're really going to talk about morality on RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, but it is a charity season. Um, but no, I, I, I don't know. I'm just team Angie, I think, but I, I think it made more sense from just purely a competition standpoint for anybody to block Roxy, let alone, like it just happened to be Angie that did it. I mean, I, I get the justification for it. I'm just saying, not a good look, especially after what she just kind of like was saying earlier in it. You know, this oh is yeah, a, it's, it's a little pot. It's gonna black stir up here. some drama for sure, which is a good <laughs> thing for us. Maybe not for them, it, like having to be there in the room. But I'm excited to see what happens next episode. Oh, for sure, for sure. Jack, do you have any uh, final thoughts here on how everything ended up here on our uh, our episode as we, uh, I, I think this is officially maybe our halfway point of the season, possibly? So um, what, what are your thoughts here as we enter the second half of All-Stars 9? So I think Angie Aria cutting Roxy makes sense in a, well, she has the most badges kind of way, but 
he's the hypocrite. And at that point, like, you unfortunately like, have to accept that, like, she was hypocritical in this moment. You know, she... and something I want to note on, too, is she made a huge moment. I, not as big as Roxy's was, but she did this, like, like a moment of, like, oh, can I have a prayer? Can I think about it? I don't know what I'm going to do. She knew what she was going to do. Because she said to us that she knew that this or that was going to happen, and that's why she got blocked by Roxy. And she was like, oh, no, I got blocked a second time. I'm so sad, as if Roxy didn't have a good reason to block her since she was just doing an eye for an eye. And she told her that, but she didn't believe that. So now I should, in turn, use her logic and say I don't believe her. But I think what this is is, on top of her copying Roxy's like little moment on the runway, in a way, I think it's kind of funny because I'm like, you know, you have this list of people who have cut you, and you the only person who was, like, really justified in cutting you, really, was, like, you know, Roxy, whereas Got Mick cut you, but, you know, you don't want to cut Got Mick because she's cut, she was already cut this week. I guess that's fine, that's a fair reason, but... Like, are you going to ever get Got Mick back for that cut? Because you said you had a list now. Um, you could have gone with Vanjie then, because Vanjie hasn't gotten cut. Vanjie has two badges, so she's still kind of close up. And she cut you, and you have not cut her. Like, there was an opportunity. It made sense she didn't want to cut Nina, because she has one badge. Chanel has zero badges. Georges is her, is her girl. She's not going to cut her. Gottmik, you can use the excuse of, oh, she was cut already this week. I don't want to do a back-to-back on Gottmik. Um, especially after the untucked where Gottmik is clearly in her head and stuff. But if you're going to go for Roxy, it just feels like kind of hypocritical because you said you wouldn't be upset and you were upset and now it's like, so Roxy should be upset. Um, I think she's having a hard time understanding why Roxy had a hard time last week and, like, why she was mad that she got sipped twice. But now Angeria could have broken this cycle of this feud that she kind of made up in her mind between her and Roxy. And now she chose not to. So if you're going to go for a girl who, like, you're kind of causing some issues with at this point, I don't know. It it feels it feels like it's getting a little too personal, per- like, in my opinion. Like, if since... That was her logic. If I'm following Angeria's logic the same way she would be, this would be a personal dig at Roxy. But, I mean, she can say it was because of the most badges, if she would like. Now, that being said, are we going to see, like, next week Roxy cuts Angeria? Next week Angeria cuts Roxy? Like, are we going to see this over and over again? I hope not. I mean, if Roxy cuts Angeria, we can't be mad at her. That's, like, that is... That would be Andrea's cut Roxy twice, Roxy's cut Angeria once. But I know that if Roxy cuts Angeria a second time, people are going to be mad. But, I mean, it is what it is, girls. Um, that being said, I'm just praying that one of these weeks coming up, Chanel gets a badge finally. Even it has to be given to her. You know, she is trying so well. Maybe this is, like, a setup between, like, another one of those like moments where she's going to have that that speech of like I actually want to go home because I haven't from her original season like who knows who knows what they're doing with her and you no, know no, acting- she's, not her. she's not Jan no don't trigger, I, you know. I mean we're not we're not making her Jan because if she was Jan she'd have to do extremely well in all the challenges and not win any of them and Ooh. get sent home for no reason I mean, if I were to be her and I was outstaged by a girl who was skinny and just did the choreo that she was told to do, yet brought almost no personality to it, yeah, I'd be upset too. But that's not what happened here, you know? She didn't lose a challenge that she clearly won. She wasn't producer's favorite. Now, other girls are getting that at it, and maybe that's upsetting for her because she hasn't really won money for her charity but we are praying for chanel um nina's probably gonna do one next week because it's an acting challenge but it's a acting challenge with rupaul which makes me nervous because you know how those aren't always the best so we can hope and pray i do like that it's a callback to old school though i think that's that's kind of cool uh like we haven't had like a, a acting challenge with ruin 
hot minute, like since they used to do like the the um the music video challenges and stuff like that. So I, I think that's a fun callback there, and it's uh. I think you're right there. I think Nina sends a good shot. Hopefully, Chanel will eventually get her badge. She definitely, definitely deserves one at this point. And um, we'll we'll kind of see where things kind of go with this whole Angeria and Roxy drama next week. Um, I think this possibly could be the point where things maybe could be reaching their boiling point. Um, as you know, uh, I mean, you're right at this point. It's either going to come down to them just constantly putting each other back and forth. Or they're going to have to find some sort of a common ground to kind of, you know, move forward here. But, um, I mean, we'll kind of see. We'll see if uh, the pettiness continues. Um, hopefully, for all of us, it does, because we can use the drama here. Um, but, you know, first half of the season, I think, has been pretty good. I think we're, we're set up here for a very competitive second half here. And um, and hopefully no one gets left too far behind to the point where, you know, it, it doesn't seem like, you know, people are entering the second half of the season uh, without a shot here. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll be, uh, be very exciting to see where things kind of go from here. So um, everybody out there um, who's listening, um, thank you for being here for the past two hours with us. It's been uh, so much fun uh, chatting with all y'all. And if y'all have anything to say about the episode, Please make sure you comment, make sure you like, and subscribe to get more content out there. Um, obviously, you know, the algorithm only will be taking stuff up if we're liking and subscribing stuff. So I have to say that, but, you know, part of the job here. So um, until next week, y'all, um, on behalf of Jack and Whiskers, my name is Renegade, and we'll see y'all benefit factors, uh, <laughs> beautiful benefactresses next week. <laughs> y'all stay beautiful, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.